work too hard you think you're indispensable have you heard that from you know not just a book from your wife from your husband <laughs> it's so easy to be out of balance and so easy to be messianic i speak from experience we're going to talk today about priorities and the balance of life you guys is there such a thing i'm newt larson jeff bogue jim brown is there such a thing as a balance to our life and our schedule uh no <laughs> <laughs> yes there is go ahead uh, it's it's it, every week uh you you have to gain control of your time and don't give someone else control of your time and you have to plan well um i i i'll back up early days i didn't do a very good job of it uh, I, I didn't take my day off because I thought there's just all this work that needs to be done. And I'll never forget a conversation, I, two conversations. One I had with a, a guy in a seminary. He said, God always gives you enough time to get done what you need to get done. Hmm. Um, and that was John T. Van said that. And then I was kind of wallowing in self-pity because I was putting a bunch of hours in, wasn't taking my day off, went, to, went to an elder board meeting. <laughs> and one of my elders, I was telling him, I hadn't taken a day off in, in six months. And he looked at me and said, that's stupid. And uh, he was right. Uh, make sure you gain control of your schedule. Yeah, I, I, I would say yes and no also. I think the same way. I actually, I don't think I believe in balance. You're, you're never going to have a nine to five, you know, weekends off thing. It's not, it's not what we signed up for. And in fact, almost no one works that way anymore, right? So it's just, it's just not the way it is. I believe in correction. So I think you're gonna have, I, I think a, a 50, 60 hour work week is relatively normal. If I think of uh, other, other white collar workers who do the type of work that I do, that's what they're working. They're working 50 hours plus and then coming and volunteering at the church, right? So I can live with that. But you're gonna have a funeral, you're gonna have an emergency, you're, you're gonna have whatever. Um, and when you get hammered like that, I would look and say, right, you take some extra time the next week uh, your, you do some of your personal life during your uh, day in, day out schedule. You have to have integrity with it, but you can correct it so that when you're home, um, you're not hammered with a big to-do list or a bunch of chores, but you can actually invest in your kid and your family and things like that. So I, I use correction a lot as my motto. I'm not looking for balance. A good way, too, is just ask your wife. Um, yeah, the yeah. correction comes there. Right. <laughs> In a good way, yeah. It, it actually does. Mine so. always has encouraged me to work more and take trips. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> let's go to that subject another time. <laughs> hey, uh, let's remind the 28-year-olds that the tension never goes away. Right, right. that's right. And you're always going to grapple with this. It's not going to get perfect, but you're always going to grapple. So what are some of the main enemies of key balance or of good family life? What are some main enemies of, of your time issues? Well, e expectations of other people. If you live up and try to live up to their expectation instead, instead of spending time with God in prayer and seeking his way and listen to the Holy Spirit directing your path and trying to do what he wants you to do instead of what people want you to do, you will never, ever um, have find balance otherwise. Yeah, That's a good one. Planning's huge. So I, I think that, you know, you, one of your big things is master schedule. Master schedule. It's I, in the old and the new testament. It is. I think you taught me that 20 years ago, and I and I <laughs> have lived by uh, Newt chapter 1, verse 8 is where you find that. And um, master schedule is a big, big deal. Scheduling out uh, your to-do list and your downtime. And then when somebody calls, it's an interruption, it's not an emergency, you look and say, no, I'm, I'm booked Tuesday night. You know, you don't have to explain Even if it's why. your daughter. Even if it's my daughter, she, why wouldn't she get that priority, right. right? Absolutely. So planning is a big one for me, planning that downtime and then gauging whether that emergency is actually an emergency or not. Yeah, that, you know, discerning that. That's a good one, Jeff. A pretty practical way, if you look at my business card, I. I put them in this order, husband, father, pastor. It's a reminder to me when wow. I hand that off to someone, I hand it off, that's the order, that's the priority, that's, that's what I try to work hard at. Yeah. You know, everybody has, I think it's 168 hours in a week. Mm -hmm. I put as one of the enemies improvisation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, a, oh, okay, okay. That's a master schedule and... and learn what, to say no. Yeah, oh learn yeah. to say no. Oh yeah. yeah, the world will go on. Yeah. What are some disciplines? I, I know it's right on the same thing. Or some policies in your church, any size church, 
that can help you keep your priorities straight in addition to master schedule uh, so, my cell phone i don't give my cell phone number out to everybody there's there a go. select few there's an inner circle of people that uh that that i hand it off to i don't i don't i don't publicize it anywhere if i sign up for something my cell phone number is not available to everybody well now you you don't have this the people all those that have my cell phone stand up for you. <laughs> i heard you did that no yeah. well, <laughs> things like that uh, cell phone i would say um, disciplines or things like this i don't say yes immediately uh, when you say can i get together with you i always say let me check my schedule first i don't give you immediate yes I don't tend to make reoccurring weekly meetings. So what if someone wants me to meet with them once a week, we can probably accomplish all the same things every other week or even once a month, right? Um, I, I set priorities and keep them. So my day off is a priority for me. Uh, using vacation. Va vacation absolutely is a priority for me. It's, it's some of my richest family times. When the kids are out of school, I'm out of the office generally that's when i use how i use my vacation so you take three months off i all summer long yeah. <laughs> no but sp but spring break fall break christmas yeah. i, I want to be oh, with yeah. my kids and so we're going to vacation there um you're not really welcome to pop over to the house or or my cell phone like in an emergency everything right but it, like i want to visit and i thought it'd be fun to hang out no you, you're just stealing from my family so those kind of disciplines the other thing I would say is this, I make it a discipline to equip the body to do the work oh, of the ministry. Oh, say more. So I have a little saying that if you invest in leadership for five years, it'll pay off for 25. And my job as, as a minister is not to do everything. My job is to equip. Yeah. Now, when you're 28 and you're starting or you're in a new church and you're starting, you're going to do a lot. But take guys with you, raise up elders, raise up small group leaders, raise up hospital visitation teams. And over the course of two, three, four years, those burdens start to spread out and you're not the, the phone call every time. When I, when I was a younger person, uh, thankfully, I think my big brother, Dave Bogue, kind of got this into my head. And so when my kids were little, you're talking about the 28 year old guy, you know, when my kids were little, I realized that I had a, about a three-year window where I could be gone and they would still be glad to see me when I came home. I used <laughs> that to double down on training leaders so that when they, were, they got to the age where they needed me around more and more, those, leadership, those leaders were in place and raised up. Yeah. So t making a, a disciplined effort to make that a part of the foundation of the and church. And I'd say if you fail as a husband, if you fail as a father, you failed as a pastor and uh, love invest as much and more in that arena and another thing i would say one thing i love to do is i free our staff up to be with their kids if they have events that are going on in school yeah. I, I give them the same benefits that i have Absolutely. i want to see them flourish too good and and to say soberly you, you not only fail as as a pastor you may flunk your whole vocational goal Absolutely. if you don't watch your time and, that's so and true spend it I, I want to add a mundane thing of, of your sleep habits and your exercise habits, mm -hmm. your physical habits and how you eat it has to do with how energetic you are in the, yep. when you are at work. And let's say something about that, both of you, because you, you work at that. I would, it's very important. I know it is to all of us here. Um, and want, I'll go back to a very simple thing. Um, in our arena, we have Sunday morning services. You know, we have three services on Sunday. Uh, I want to give my absolute best Sunday morning. So Saturday night in our home, I shut down earlier than any night of the week. I go to bed early. I prepare myself to be ready. But the only way I can do that is if I'm physically have a, an exercise and an eating plan in place. And my wife helps me with that. Um, I'm very, very, very intentional about running, very, very intentional about exercising because if any place you want to give your absolute best is in your home and is in your church, God has handed us the bride of Jesus Christ. We should give our absolute best. And the other piece of that is how can I effectively serve when I, if I'm not physically able to? If there's one area of my life that's toxic, it'll affect all the other areas. And physical health is a toxic place for a lot of pastors. Yeah, the, I would, I would uh, celebrate the same things, especially on the weekends. We have Saturday night services and Sunday morning. 
I have a very strict routine. I eat the same thing every Saturday because because I, I it, it lots literally like lots of protein, those kind of things. Carbs in the morning kind of get you going. So I think through like an athlete would try to think sure. through before a game, right? Um, sleep is a is a a deal, and so you got to guard like getting on the internet or getting on uh, a television thing. Like if it's got to go off, it's got to go off. Exercise, exercise is always a discipline for me. I don't enjoy running or those kind of things. So what I've tried to do, what motivates me the most is when I can exercise with my kids. So right now that's full combat basketball in the driveway, you know, because I, I feel like I'm with them and I'm getting my heart rate up, those kind of things. During the day, if I have a meeting that is kind of a relational meeting with a staff person, we're taking a walk and having that meeting. You know, so we're moving, and it does, it clears your head. So you're, you're thinking like that. An athlete would prep themselves. Uh, an actor would prep themselves, that kind of a thing. And, and that's, uh, that's the intentionality we would want to put into. I know this is uh, going to cover with just a fraction of the people listening, but uh, some don't have as many demands on their schedule. You start off in a church of 50. What do you do by self-discipline to fill the time in good ways when you're just building a church. Our lives in church leadership have been prescribed for us to a large extent. I would say get outside of your walls. Good. Yeah. Um, you got to get out and meet people in the community. Invest yourselves in community events. I coach the whole way through. In fact, if you were asked people that are part of Grace now how they first met me, I was Coach Brown. Um, you have time to coach and invest. Get out there with your kids, be their coach invest in community stuff get outside of your walls yeah you when you have 50 people you don't need to study for a sermon 40 hours you need to get some uh, godly correct thoughts together and present those on the weekend so you meet people coach go to every funeral home in town and volunteer to do the funerals for them you'll meet tons of people that yeah. way right um, invest in your leaders. Your families Every, of the of the those who yeah died. yeah families the surviving families. You can count. Go ahead. Well, you can count if you know if they're there for the weekend. Sure, you can count. But 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 the families. Yeah, you just get into networks of people that way. Yeah. Every breakfast, every lunch ought to be booked. Train a leader. Meet a person. Connect with them. Follow up with maybe with somebody who showed up on the weekend. But when you when you're um, when you're at that phase. You invest yourself, you meet people, you meet people, you meet people, you meet people, you meet people. Absolutely. I beg pastors to also schedule their wives. We're saying that kind of thing. Schedule your children. And when somebody asks if you could do something, then you say, I have something, then I can't. Right. I, uh, a good guide is our wife, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, most of our wives are fairly, we only have one each, but they're, <laughs> they're fairly <laughs> candid with us about time. And we know when it's time. To yeah, they should actually probably do this this session. Yeah, we're we, not going to give no, them no, time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll see the notes, and we hope you'll be helped. We we all struggle with it, even in our lives now. We admit that, but it's it's there. There's 168 hours, and every week we got to fill them carefully and with wisdom, mm -hmm. starting with God, dealing with ourselves. Thank you for being with us, Jim Brown, Jeff Bogue, Newt Larson. God bless. Thank you.